Let's go. Master Feyfar is very keen to meet you. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Fix Pain, and we will continue with Kingdom Town Deliverance. So now I'm at Sasso. We will continue with our main quest, all that blisters. And also last time I have replayed Robert Baron and I found the treasure maps on the road with Wayfarer and I've got treasure map 24 so that means what we left is treasure map 3 and then after that we can start to treasure hunt now let's go continue with talking to Ulrich so, what did Master Pfeiffer have to say? I consulted him and we definitely have a starting point. Tell me more. Master Pfeiffer found out they need copper sheets for the core of the coins and quicksilver for the alma... alma... Uh, uh, the other part? I see. They have such materials at the monastery. Exactly. That's why I'm interested in the local forges. Yes, that is good. Yesterday, I heard people from the craftsman's yard by the monastery complaining. They said... They could not sleep at night, because the blacksmith works all the time till dawn. I see. That's certainly worth asking about. Have you heard anything else? You said they use quicksilver. There is a painter lodging here who is painting the church in Ujits. I heard him complain also. He said that he went to the monastery for quicksilver and it was all gone. Well, that's something to follow up as well. Thanks. Okay, now we need to talk to Master Fresco. And he's around here. Greetings, good night. How may I serve you? I hear you've had some problems with the supply of Quicksilver. Problems? I should say so. For the third time this month, they've told me there's none. There's no Quicksilver to be had, they said. And who exactly are you talking about? Who's holding back the goods on you? The monastery overseer, or his assistant, more like. So what did the overseer have to say to you? Nothing. Apparently he doesn't deal in such trifles. Leaves it all to his assistant, the pompous git. Surely such valuable material can't just vanish. Where can it be? I wish I knew. Every time I ask for the red paint, there's a different reason why they haven't got the quicksilver to mix it. Once they said the goods never arrived, and another time that the wagon carrying it was ambushed. Then it went astray somewhere. And you think they're lying? Jesus, what do I know? Well, it seems pretty strange to me. Three times in a row, the same thing goes missing. There's bad luck, and then there's something else. What do you need Quicksilver for? I don't. They do. To mix up the red pigment for me. I'm taking the church in Ujits. Can you imagine how stupid those biblical scenes look without red? Not really. Then be glad you can. My eyes are just to imagine it. That's all I need to know for now. Ah. But wouldn't you care to buy something before you go? Or play a game? I really need some money. I've been waiting here a while and my stay is getting expensive. Yes, so let's check on what he sell. Why not? Show me what you have to offer. See you later. And he has Treasure Map 3. And also Tavern Life 2. 
skill book for drinking. I will buy that. And that makes I'm already complete all the treasure maps. So we will do treasure hunts in the separate videos. Yeah. For now let's continue the quest. help to you now. I'm looking for some quicksilver. Would you have any on hand? Go to my assistant. He deals with such trivial matters. Fine, thank you. See you later. I hope I can be of some humble service to you. Do you have any quicksilver in stock? Who's asking? I'm here on behalf of the master fresco painter. He said you sent him away empty-handed three times already. Then I don't have any. That sounds almost as if you don't want to sell it to me. It's not that I don't want to. It's that I can't. Can't you? In the Sassau Monastery? That seems unlikely. It looks more like you're lining your own pockets to me. I wonder what people would have to say about that. It's not. I'm not. Ugh. Shit. Get to the point. Uh, they came for me at noon. Directly to the office. The overseer was somewhere on his rounds. Some night, it was. Without a crest. Armed. He called himself Sir Yezhek, and he had a lackey with him called Rapporta. A scruffy fellow with a yellow cape. Always whistling, he was. They told me they wanted all the quicksilver we order for the monastery. Of course, I told him that wouldn't be possible. And then what? Did they threaten you? Uh, not at first. They tried to bribe me, and when I refused, they started threatening. How did you hand it over to them? I take it up the hill behind the monastery here. There's a big tree there with a small chapel underneath. Sometimes Rapporta is there waiting for me. If not, I leave it there. What did they threaten you with? They said they know people in the monastery, that they'd have me thrown out and beaten for stealing. And you had been stealing, I mean before then. You know how it is. I work my fingers to the bone and they pay me a pittance. So they knew about you? Yes, they knew my name, everything. Very well, thank you. Good luck to you. Now we have information about the Quicksilver and let's check on where he ended the Quicksilver and it's just outside of Monastery Yeah Sleep. Damn. Why are you just sitting around? Why not? Admiring the view. People just do not appreciate a lovely view these days. Does the name Rapporta ring any bells for you? Rapporta, you say? Rapporta. Hmm. Nope, I can't hear any bells ringing at all. Look, you little jester, I'm investigating a crime against the king on the direct orders of Sir Radzik. Are you really going to keep pretending you don't know anything? 
Hang on. What's all this about a crime against the king? I'm just keeping an eye on things. When a wagon comes in, I'll make sure nobody robs it. I get a commission for that. That's it. See? That didn't hurt a bit. Where's Rapata? I don't know. He's been staying in town lately. He hardly ever shows up here. It seems he's keeping an eye on someone there. But I don't know who. Who comes to fetch them? I don't know. Some people. They don't speak. Just look mean. Take the goods and go. Okay, now we can just leave them. Or persuade them to leave. Bit of friendly advice. You're wasting your time here. Wrap it to Scarpet and won't be coming back this way anytime soon. You might as well pack up and go home. What? The bastard owes me a dozen groschen. Damn it. Now what? Well, no use hanging around here anyway. In any case, thanks for the information. I could have been stuck here for weeks. Yeah, just go, man. Where you sleep again? <laughs> well, that's just our objective. Now let's start find about the copper. Yeah. And to find out about the copper Let's talk to Blacksmith yeah. save you what can I do for you do you ever work with copper here no and even if I wanted to I couldn't Zach from the monastery craftsman's yard has bought out all the copper what can you tell me about the Sassal blacksmiths <laughs> there's too many of us I'll tell you that for free this is only a small town there's Zach who has a forge in the craftsman's yard and mostly works on the construction of the church and then, apart from me, there's Master Armourer Otter of Rabstein. Tell me more about Zack. Don't have much time for him myself. He knows his craft, no question. But he seems to think his son, Vitus, will be a Master Armourer in Prague one day. My father was a blacksmith, and I expect he thought much the same about me. That's how fathers are, isn't it? Of course, any man should be proud of his boy. But Zack makes pride a sin. That's why he's at loggerheads with Master Otter. Can you tell me something about Master Otter? Well now, there's a master to look up to. He's worked for the Lords of Kunstadt and for the richest townsfolk of Prague. If you don't mind my asking, what brings him here? The same as draws all reasonable people. He's enjoying the peace and quiet. Or rather, he used to enjoy some peace. That dispute with Zack must have put a few more wrinkles on his brow. What are Zack and Master Otter arguing about? Zack had his boy Vitus trained as an armor in Kuttenberg, and he wanted to buy out Otter's place for him. Except that Otter's a proud man. How would it have looked? A master armorer giving way to a young whippersnapper who's barely let go of his mother's skirts? And they've been arguing ever since. Well, Zack mostly. He badmouths Otter every chance he gets. He claims that he's only fit for mending pots, and that his son will see him off. That will be all. Thank you. God be with you. Okay, so there is Zack and Master Ota. Yeah. For Master Ota, we can find it in Armory, which is here. 
cucumbers. I'll stay firm all winter. Buy them before someone else does. Good men, good wives. Come have a look. Don't be shy. What the? You'll never see such fine men. I hope I can be of help to you, knight. Do you make anything out of copper, master? I do a bit of damascene decor sometimes. Why do you ask? I'm looking for someone who could do me some copper sheets. Well, that's pretty rough and ready work. I wouldn't waste my time with it. But go and ask Zach from the craftsman's yard by the monastery. He's brought up all the copper to be had around here anyway. What can you tell me about the blacksmiths here in Sasa? Depends which ones you mean. In the town, there's Mikesh. He's a decent man and an honest craftsman. And in the yard by the monastery, there's Zack. But there's not many good words I can say about him. Tell me something about Mikesh. Like I said, he's an honest craftsman, which isn't something you can say about every blacksmith in town. What about the monastery blacksmith, Zack? Well, him and me don't exactly see eye to eye. He wanted to buy my business, but I turned him down. Ever since then, he hasn't had a good word to say about me. That'll be all. Thank you. Good luck, then. Okay, so it brings us to Zach. And he is in the yard of Monastery. So let's go there. Where is he? He should be in here. No, not him. Maybe we should wait. Yep. I will save. I'm at your service, Sir Knight. Do you work any copper here, Master Blacksmith? Why do you ask? I'm looking into a few things here. Looking into things? Meaning what? I'm on the trail of a gang of counterfeiters. Well, that's a serious business, but to answer your question, no. I don't work copper here. That's not what I heard. What? I was told in town that you bought all the other blacksmiths copper. By Mikus and the Master Armourer, am I right? They're forever trying to smear my good name. That's why they said it. To make me look suspicious. But they don't know I'm investigating anything. Then they're making things up just for spite. Anything else? I still have work to do. Okay, so he... will not tell us about the hey, copper. Well. But actually, we can talk to his son. 
I'm glad to see you. Your father says you don't work any copper. We don't. I've heard differently around town. They say your father's bought up all the copper to be had. Are you calling me a liar? Or my father? You're asking for it, boy. You're right. It's nothing to me either way. Right. So clear off. I mean, beside the fact I'm here on behalf of the Royal Burgrave Sir Radzik Kobola investigating a grievous crime against the Crown. What? What are you talking about? I'd let you read my Bill of Authority, but I doubt you're educated enough to understand it. I'm... I'm so sorry. I didn't realise. If I'd known, of course I wouldn't. I mean, you understand, don't you? Stop prattling, for God's sake, and start telling me the truth. What's the story with the copper at your forge? You're right. We do make copper sheets here at night. So why all the secrecy about it? Father forbade me to talk about it. I don't know why. I didn't ask. Who buys those sheets from you? I don't know. I've never set eyes on him. Father doesn't like to talk about it. Your father has some serious explaining to do. I'm so sorry. If I'd known who you were, I'd never have taken such liberties. Never mind. You weren't to know who I am. You were just protecting your father's business interests like any good son. Thank you. Good luck then. Okay, now his son has confessed. Now oh, let's talk again. So back to that copper, Master Blacksmith. What? I thought I told you I don't work with copper. Your son put it quite differently. What's that? What are you blabbering on about? Don't be angry with him. I didn't give him any choice. All right. I suppose there's no point lying. We do make copper sheets here, and I wanted to keep it quiet. Why? Pays me good money, and the people I do it for. I wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of them. Did they threaten you? They didn't have to. Just by the look of them, I could say I needed to shut my mouth and do what they wanted. And did they ever tell you who they were? Do you know where to find them? I know a little. I'll show some understanding. There's nothing but trouble in it for me. I'll lose the work and be left looking over my shoulder for some thugs to come and burn down my house. Or worse. If you lie down with dogs, you shouldn't complain about the fleas. There's no need for threats. We can both benefit here. If I tell you everything I know, you can help me with a certain small matter. One that'll cover up for my loss of earnings. Okay, so for this choice, we need to persuade him to get the reward that we will get in the next side quest. Don't choose the choice number one. Just choose these two. You got a cheek. Not only are you in with the counterfeiter gang, but you lied to me on top of it. You should be on your knees begging for mercy right now, not trying to make a profit. I didn't know what they were doing. But now you do know, and you've still got the cheek to try to strike a deal with me. So Rad's definitely going to be hearing about this. You're right. I I'm sorry, I overstepped the mark. I certainly didn't mean to offend one of Lord Radzik's men. One evening I got a visit from this scruffy beggar calling himself Rapota. He had a yellow cape on and kept whistling to himself. There was a knight with him too, but he didn't give his name. They told me what I had to do, how much I'd get for it, and I had to keep my mouth shut. Hmm. And where can I find this Rapota? Or the knight? I don't know exactly. But I've always left the wagon with the goods behind the monastery, on the hill there, next to a small chapel under a big tree. Anything else? No. I swear that's all I know. Well, that'll do me for now. <clears throat> Young man, about that matter I need help with. I'll gladly pay you. God be with you, Henry. Okay, so this is for the side quest. First, tell me what's going on. I recently tried to buy Master Armorer Otto Rapstein's business for my son Vitus, but that old fool wouldn't listen to reason. He said he couldn't understand his legacy being taken over by a clod like my Vitus. Despite the insult, I doubled my offer, but Master Otter still wouldn't budge. And what is it you need from me? 
I thought I'd show Otter that Vitus isn't such a dolt as he thinks, but for that I need someone experienced in combat. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. What's your plan? Otter's busy making a very pretty suit of armor for the bailiff. So I was thinking, if we could show that pretty armor of his is absolutely useless, he'd be disgraced. And how am I supposed to see to that? Well, I would reckon we'd arrange a duel of champions with bludgeons. You'll put on Vitus's armor, and Otter will send his champion in that tin shit of his. You invite the bailiff to watch, and Otter will be made a laughingstock in front of everyone. And what do I get out of it? Vitus will let you have the cuirass from his suit of armor, and I'll throw in a few groschen on top. Sounds good. And I'm sure a fellow like you will be glad to be on good terms with the best armorer for miles around, eh? That remains to be seen. Do you really think that will work? Otto's always mouthing off in the alehouse that my young lad isn't worth a damn. Once I show he's just a bitter old bastard spouting hot air, his business will be ruined. And Vitus will reap the reward. What with all the strife in the country these days, there'll be no end of work for a good armorer. But what if I lose? Nonsense. How could you? Vitus's armor is light as an eggshell and hard as a rock. Agreed. I'll get to work on it. Wonderful. Go good to day, Otto Henry. first and talk him into it. Then go to the bailiff so he can announce it and get spectators. The more people see it, the better. We'll bring the armor to you at the combat arena. See you later. Okay. So the side quest straight talk has started. So let's just do this. We need to go to Master Ota. Save. What can I do for you? Master Armorer, I have a message for you from Blacksmith Zack. If it's another one of his so-called generous offers, you can go straight back and tell him I'm not selling, and that's that. No, this is another matter. Vitus wants to challenge you to a duel. What? <laughs> Me fight with that brat? Zack must have lost his mind entirely. Surely you're not afraid of him, Master Otter. Ha! Me? Afraid of him? Nonsense. But a respectable craftsman like me can't be seen battering a barely trained runt. It will be a duel with bludgeons. No bloodshed. At most a few bruises and some dents in the armor. Zack chose me to wear a Vitus armor. And so I'm to choose a champion of my own? That sounds reasonable. Good. So let's agree on the time and place. Hold your horses, young fella. I've got a counter offer for you. Now I'm sure Zack is paying you well. I won't deny it. I could pay you more. And I'd tailor make a cure us just for you. What do you say? You mean if I fight as your champion instead? I'm not sure how Zack would take it. No, no. You fight on Zack's side and lose. Okay, so now we need to choose. We can accept this offer or stay with Zack. So first, I want to accept this offer. All right, I'll do it. Wonderful. Zack won't know what hit him. So, choose the time and place. What, me? You're the one being challenged, so it's your right. Well, it's all the same to me. Go and sort it out with the bailiff. He should know about it anyway, so I don't look like a troublemaker. All right. See you later. Now to arrange the duel, we need to go to Billy. I'm honored that you should come to me. I'm here on behalf of Blacksmith Zack. Zack? 
What does that madman want now? Don't tell me. It's another complaint about the Master Armorer. Well, you can tell Zack if you waste another minute of my time with that pathetic feud of his. I'll have him up for disrespecting the office of the Bailiff. No, it's not a complaint this time. In fact, Zack came up with an idea to settle the dispute once and for all. Is that so? Well, that's a different kettle of fish. That's just what I was after. You have my full attention, friend. What's his plan? A duel. Jesus Christ! Has he lost his wits entirely? Zack is a madman, I can't deny it. But this would just be a duel with bludgeons. Nothing too dangerous. Now hold on a moment, young fellow. Zack is a respected tradesman. He doesn't do for folk to go around doubting his sanity. Certainly not his messenger boy. I'm not his messenger boy. That's not important. <laughs> Let's leave that aside and get back to the point. Zack chose me as his champion. I'll be wearing a suit of armor made by his son, Vitus, and I'll fight Otter's champion. Whoever falls first, loses. <laughs> That sounds like a fine spectacle for the village green. Naturally, I'll have to be present to ensure nothing untoward happens. <laughs> Your presence is certainly expected, Bailiff. We'd like you to referee the whole duel. Very well. We'll have it on the marketplace in the front of the church. But when? That's up to you. We can announce it right now. Let's do it. I'll have it announced around town. You come along at just the right time. It'll be a fine show for the townsfolk, and I'll finally get that pair and their constant squabbling off my back. Take care now. Good citizens of Sassau! Our township has long been plagued by a protracted dispute. As you are no doubt aware, Zack, the blacksmith of the monastery courtyard, and master armorer Otto Rabstein have been, for some time, at odds. <laughs> and in so much as it behoves my office as bailiff to settle such disputes and maintain peace and order, I have decided to resolve the blacksmith's quarrel by unconventional means, whilst affording an entertaining spectacle. In short, we shall let them knock each other's teeth out. <laughs> However, since it ill befits two respectable tradesmen to maul each other on the market square like a pair of cocks on a dung heap, each of them has elected a champion. Zack. The blacksmith has appointed to fight in his stead Henry of Scarlet and Master Otto Rabstein's champion will be <laughs> Please introduce yourself Sir Knight Master Otto <laughs> Master will Otto fight for Master Otto I don't need some young pup to take my place. <laughs> I remind you that this will be a duel with bludgeons alone. And until first blood is shed. Come folks, be sensible for heaven's sake. We don't want any maiming here or God forbid murder. So if both contestants are ready, let us begin. Okay, no, because I'm in Master Ota's side, so I will lose in here. Okay, hit me, man. Yeah. <laughs> 
Come on. You get one more. What the hell are you playing at, you blockhead? That old fart made a complete fool of you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Otto was just too good for me. Damn it. I should have known you weren't up to it. Well, I'll just have to think of something else. But the bailiff said the duel would end the dispute. Quiet! Don't annoy me more than you already have. Now get out of my sight before I shove that bludgeon up your ass. <laughs> Zack is really mad at us. Now let's see about the reward from Master Alta. I'll come for my reward. It's a good thing you're here. I'm glad you didn't change your mind about throwing the duel. You could land some hefty blows if you wanted to. Maybe. I'll give you one of my older pieces, but I adjusted it so it will fit you like a glove. Thanks. If you ever need anything else, stop by. I will. See you later. Armor Otas Quiras. And if we check that, well, it's terrible. <laughs> So I will reload again and just another option. That's not how it will be. The real deal will be between your pieces of handiwork. How's that? It will be a duel with bludgeons. No bloodshed. At most a few bruises and some dents in the armor. Zack chose me to wear a Vitus armor. And so I'm to choose a champion of my own. That sounds reasonable. Good. So let's agree on the time and place. Hold your horses, young fella. I will skip some dialogues that we already hear. Maybe I'm just doing it out of love for my neighbor. Aye, a regular good Samaritan, no doubt. I could pay you more. And I'd tailor make a Kiras just for you. What do you say? You mean if I fight as your champion instead? I'm not sure how Zack would take it. No, no, you fight on Zack's side. And lose. That's not very honourable. And Zack's constant slander and mudslinging are the height of honour, are they? But what if Zack's right? You're not as young as you used to be, and Vitus has trained with renowned masters. What? You're as impertinent as that bastard Zack <laughs> and his whelp of a son. How dare you? I don't need help from the likes of you. You'll get such a battering, even Brother Nicodemus from the monastery won't know which side of you is up. Now, clear off! Not until you tell me where and when we should meet. I don't know! Sort it out with the bailiff! He should come anyway, so I don't get the blame when you get beaten to a pulp! And he will really meet at us. But my reputation is still 72. Well, not much. Where is the belief? My respects to you. I'm here on behalf of Blacksmith Zack. Zack? Don't tell me. Well, you. No, it's not a comp. Is that so? A duel. Jesus Christ! Zack is a madman. I can't. Now hold on a m no, I apologize, Bailiff. I didn't mean to offend anyone. Fine, fine. Let's leave that aside and get back to the point. Zack chose me as his... <laughs> Naturally. Your presence is so... Very well. That's up to you. We can announce it right now. And let's start the duel. Let's do it. I'll have it announced around town. 
You come along at just the right time. It'll be a fine show for the townsfolk, and I'll finally get that pair and their constant squabbling off my back. I'll be with you. And now we'll skip the introduction Good as well. Citizens of Sassau! Our township has long been plagued by a protracted. Now we need to win. Bastard's ass, Henry. His ears will be ringing for a month. Now everyone will see who knows how to make armor and who's all hot air. You mean after the Talmberg attack on the brigand secret camp? It was as easy as falling off a log. Any other business disputes you'd like me to sort out for you? I might have, lad, but not any you can solve with a bludgeon. Anyway, come by the forge later for your reward. All right. There was a great big battle. Them fuckers filled the whole of Bribislav. The Tambor garrison had to get reinforcements to beat them. Okay, now we need to go to Forge. Now and planting new graves in Ujit. But they cleared the wasp's nest good and proper. If you say so. But I still reckon we haven't seen the last of it. That Sigismund is still on the rampage. Attacking the nobles one by one across the land. And brigands are like weeds. Burn them down and they just sprout up somewhere else. That's not the half of it. What about the attack on Merhoye? While the lords are dealing with one lot of marauders in Trivislavic, there's another bunch pillaging somewhere else. There'll be no peace as long as Sigismund goes on ransacking Bohemia. Sure as the sun circles the earth. You know how to lift a fellow's spirits. Nice conversation. We need to wait check return. I hope I can be of help to you, Knight. I'll come for my reward. Of course. And thanks again, lad. It's worked wonders for my trade. And will Otter sell you his business? I don't know. But the way things are looking now, his trade will soon be dead as a doornail anyway. You told me I'd get that kiras made by Vitus and a few Groschen on top. I did. And I'm a man of my word. Here you are. Thanks. Now we've got the fittest queer ass. Good luck then. And finish the rattle quest. And it's better than Otas. So I will choose this. Now let's continue with our story. God bless you. What troubles you? You look different, Master. 
So I suffered in. I don't want to know that I'm in town. Why? I don't want to alarm our prey. Gossip spreads quickly, and if those scoundrels learn we're onto them, they'll flee. And that does make sense. So what have you found out so far? I found out where they get the copper sheets from. Really? So tell me. It's the smith on the monastery craftsman's yard. He supplies the counterfeiters. Do you know how he gets the goods to them? No. All I know is that someone called Rapata collected the goods. Not much, but it's a start. At least it's not a common name. Listen, Henry, I had another thought on the way here. Those counterfeiters have to have a punch die to make the fake coins. Yes, of course. That's sophisticated work. And there's a man I know who works at the monastery yard, master engraver Jerome of Silesia. You don't suppose that he's... No, not that, God forbid. I know him well. He'd never do anything like that. But he runs an engraving workshop, so he might have heard something. Very well. I'll ask him. But ask with tact. I don't want him getting offended. And I prefer you not to mention me at all. I'll try to think of something. I found out where they get their quicksilver from. You were right. It was the monastery. Hmm. It was the only logical explanation. It changed hands on the hill behind the monastery. Have you been there to have a look around? I have, but I didn't find anything interesting. And have you found out who's behind it? Rapata, once again. The same scoundrel. That's all. Goodbye. Okay, game save. Greetings, good. Take care. Now we need to go to Jerome. My humble greetings. How may I serve you? How goes the work, Master? Getting there, getting there. You need something, my boy? What are you doing here, anyway? You're in an engraver's shop, my boy. We're engraving, of course. Yeah, but engraving what? And what's it used for? Oh, we engrave wood and stone as well as metal. Here in the monastery, it's mostly about decoration. You've got quite a large workshop, Master. You don't do all the work alone, surely? I'm usually here with my apprentice, Florian. Of course, by simple observation, you'll note that this is not currently the case, and I'm here alone. Which means that either I'm a liar or something out of the ordinary has occurred. Um, I see. I think. So what's happened to Florian? He shares the fate of the pharaohs for today. The fifth scourge of Egypt did smite him. The plague. Or so his message advised me. Jesus Christ, the plague. Do remain calm. I'm quite certain the plague from which Florian is suffering wasn't a judgment from on high. Or if it was, it was a judgment on excessive drinking. I'm told such an ailment can be of truly biblical proportions. What's he like, your apprentice, Florian? I'm afraid that his exuberant youth has taken its toll. He's been acting strangely of late. I fear he has delusions of persecution. I don't really know what you mean, at all. Recently, for example, he told me that someone was following him. And the very next day he bought a padlock from the blacksmith and locked up his chest. As though I would ever sneak into it. In any case, why the interest? Are you looking for him? Something like that. May I ask why? I'll have a message for him. A message? Who would be interested in that, Maestro? 
other than his furious and deeply disappointed master, of course. About your question, you'll find him at home, no doubt feverishly dying. He sleeps in the baker's cellar. Ah, thank you. Does Florian have any enemies? A man such as he certainly owes money at every turn, and the parents of local girls are undoubtedly displeased with his attempts to propagate. However, most recently it was that fury from the baths who accosted him in quite a spectacular rage. A woman from the baths? What did she do? The harpy nearly tore all Florian's hair out. I don't frequently feel sorry for my ne'er-do-well apprentice, but on that occasion I made an exception. Do you have any idea why she did it? She was screaming about some girl, some flighty bathmaid, Esther. I would say that Florine had felt the joys of spring and acted accordingly, although one would have thought they'd be used to that sort of thing at the bathhouse. Thank you. I'll leave you to your work. God be with you. Okay. It's Derek as to Florian. But before that, let's talk to Madame in that house and get information about Esther. Yeah. Oh, I'm missing a nest in here. Nice. safe. How may I help you, good knight? I hear you're at odds with Apprentice Florian. At odds? I'll give you at odds. It's that sod's fault they took my Esther. Poor girl. I shudder to think what's become of her. What exactly happened? This man came in wanting a bath, and Esther with it. She doesn't normally offer that kind of service, but I didn't see the harm, so I sent her in to him. And suddenly I hear screams, so I run out, and I see the bastard pulling her out of the tent and shoving her into a boat. I'm sorry they took her, but what exactly has it got to do with Florian? They shouted at me to tell Florian that when he wises up, he'll get the girl back. I assume that Florian knows this, Esther. You know village girls. They don't get much of a choice. Every other knave has a turnip for a brain, and if they don't, they're relatives. And then some young dandy turns up who writes her little poems. What's the poor girl to do? And this is how it ends. She should have stuck with the turnip heads. Where can I find this Florian? I'd like to ask him a few questions. He works in the engraver's workshop at the monastery craftsman's yard. And if he's not there, he'll be hauled up like the rat he is in the cellar he rents from the baker. He's afraid of me, for sure. What did the bailiff make of it? Don't even get me started on that. He's another fine... I won't say what. I told him everything, but he says he won't do nothing about it. How's that then? He wouldn't tell me to my face, of course. But people here don't think much of us. There's some as reckon my Esther deserves what she got. Poor girl. It sounds like you were close to Esther. I loved her like my very own. She came to me as an orphan, like a wolf child she was. I raised her and taught her and gave her a job, and now she's gone. Who knows if she's even alive? Okay. I'm now interested I want to in see. your uh, services. So what are you interested in? A bit of everything. Heal my... I'm sure you... God be with you. All right, now we are clean and set up. Let's go talk to Florian.
grant you health. How may I help you? You look quite sprightly for an invalid. What? Who the hell are you? My name's Henry, and I'm making inquiries for Sir Radzig Kobola. And what do you want from me? Straight to the point then. All right. I've been investigating counterfeit money, and the trail led me straight to you. Does the name Rapporteur mean anything to you? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe? Don't bother. I know you know him. You make the punch dies for the counterfeiters. How do you hand them over? Do you know where their workshop is? I can't say anything. I'll deny everything and you've got nothing on me. No evidence, just accusations. It's got something to do with that girl, hasn't it? How do you know? That doesn't matter. No, I, I suppose not. I didn't want to get involved, I swear. Those bastards kidnapped Esther. If I don't cooperate, they'll kill her. Who is Esther? My girl, of course. That scum took her right out of the bathhouse. I'm sorry about that. Me too. Listen, I'll tell you everything, I promise. But only if I know that Esther's safe. What, so I'm to go searching for her in the woods? I know where they're keeping her, but nobody will help me. And what can puny little me do face with those strapping great villains? Very well. I'll bring back your Esther. Really? Yes, but then you have to tell me everything. I will. I swear to God Almighty. Please, just bring her back to me. Nothing else matters. Where are they keeping her? In the Scallet Hills. There are some abandoned cottages around the mines. That's where I saw her last. They took me there when I said they had to let me speak to her. All right. I'll go there and try and think of something. You're my saviour. Don't get your hopes up. Anything could happen. God be with you. Okay, another side quest. We need to save Esther. And she's so far around here. And actually, it's in this camp.
Who's there? Maybe we can wait until they sleep. Hey, who's or there? Try to sneak. Who's there? Crawling out from under some rock. To arm! You'll get what for it. They won't hurt you now. However did you find me? Florian told me where they took you. I'm a fool. I thought he was just a dandy, God knows why. And it turns out he's a villain in league with thieves. And a coward too. This whole time he knew where I was. It's not Florian's fault. He was terrified they'd do something to you. They had him over a barrel. You're right. Poor Florian must have been more scared than me. I'd say so. We should probably set off. I'll go with you. I'd hate to lose you on the way. Why the time is not... Go into the morning. I'm honored that you should come to me. I found that Esther of yours. I know. Back already. How can I ever thank you? 
How By can you know that? You just they wake up, man. They found me in one evening. They <laughs> called me when I went to the shit pile. They started to badger me about working for them. They? Yes, Rapata. And a the night they called Sir Yezek. And then what? They explained what they wanted from me and I told them to sod off. I'm guessing that didn't go down too well. It wasn't all that bad. They just threw me on the dung heap and left. And I thought it was just a drunkard's joke. But then they took Esther. Where will I find Rapata? He's usually wherever I am. What does that mean? He watches me. Everywhere I go. And when I'm at home, he sits on the bench in the square, watching my house. So he's there now? Hard to say. Sometimes I see him in the tavern on the green, buying supplies. All right. At least I know where to start. And you go to work tomorrow, you hear? Why? Because we have to lure him out. And besides, your master will surely be glad to see you. I have my doubts. Why didn't you tell anyone? At first I took it for a bad joke. And then, when they snatched Esther, there was nothing to be done. I suppose I'd better go. I'd hate the bastard to get away. Good luck, and thanks for the help. Goodbye. Now we need to find Rapota. And he should be still around here. Okay, this guy. Yes. Are you Rapporteur by any chance? Pardon me? Do we know each other? No, but I'm hoping to change that. Uh, um, well, I, I don't have much time right now. I'd best be off. It'll only take a moment. Um, all right then. What do you want? I know that you spy on Florian. I know you were involved in the kidnapping of the bathmaid, and I know why you're doing it all. Ah, uh, it seems there's no point making excuses. None. Now tell me where their workshop is. Of course, of course. That... that will be the best solution. So? Uh, let's leave it for another time. And he will run. No, I give up! So, are you ready to talk? I will, I will. Just don't hurt me, please. What do you want from me? Tell me where the workshop is. Don't worry. Your master won't be punishing you for betraying him. You're both going to have too many other problems. It's in the Scullet's mines. That doesn't narrow it down very much. On the eastern side of Scullet's Hill, there's an abandoned mine gallery. Well... It used to be abandoned. Now there's a small camp in front of it and the workshop is inside. Who is your lord? Sir Yezhek of Ronoff. That's what he calls himself, although Ronoff Castle's long gone. What happened to it? Ronoff used to belong to Vincent, Count Lichtenberg. After his death, it fell to Margrave Jobst, and he had it pulled down. He knew full well that Vincent's vassals would resist him. Why? Everyone knows that when a lord dies without issue, the king can confer his estate on whoever he pleases. But Vincent had descendants. Ronoff only fell to the Margrave because he declared them all illegitimate. All because Vincent had refused to fight for him against Sir Prokop. Sir Yezhek led a revolt of the vassals, but Jobs rounded them all up. Only Sir Yezhek got away. Since then, he's become the scourge of the domain. Who are you, anyway? They call me Rapota. I used to be the executioner's henchman in Brno. And how did you come to be serving Sir Yezhek? I helped him escape from prison. If I was going to serve anyone, 
better Sir Yezhek than the Executioner. So you saw being a brigand's henchman as a step up in the world? I thought if things changed and he stopped marauding, he might get Ronoff back and take me into his service. Well, after this little escapade, you can forget about that. You'll be lucky if you don't end up swinging on the gallows. It's all the same anyway now. I've betrayed him. So who's Sir Yezhek working for? Don't tell me he just took it into his head one day to start forging coins. That's not for me to know. Sir Yezhek was on speaking terms with various lordships. Such as? We were often guests at the monastery, but I slept in the hayloft, so I heard nothing. And apart from that? In the camp, you'd occasionally see a Hungarian nobleman, but I don't know what he was doing there, or who he is. I think I've heard enough. Can I ask you something? Yes? I don't want to hang. It's a horrible death. I prefer you just kill me here and now. We can choose to kill him or take him to dungeon. But let's go. Ah, you're not worth tainting my sword with your blood. Let, I'd get lost before I change my mind. Just let him go. It's totally fine. Okay, so now we can just go to this mine shaft or we can ask Ulrich to come with us and I will come to Ulrich first. Yeah. And maybe we can wait until morning so we can get a better view. I finally found out where the Forger's workshop is. Master Feifar was right. The Forgers are sticking close to the supply source. Their workshop is somewhere in the mines. The entrance is on the eastern side of the hill. I have no idea what to expect there, but I'd rather go there with some backup. I will be glad to leave it. Lead on. And we start in here. I will save in here. Because we need to battle some bandits and Ulrich can die in here. So just be careful. What are you doing? Ah. 
verflucht. You're stronger than you look. What are you doing, man? Let's go. Yeah, I made a mistake. Attack him. <laughs> Let's just go in there. Jesus Christ, who are you and what are you doing here? I'm here at the command of the royal hetman, Sir Radzig Kabila. And who's he? That's no concern of yours. I'm sure we could come to some sort of agreement. Uh, I have plenty of coin. <laughs> we can come to an agreement that you'll keep your mouth shut. Oh. 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 Ah. Please, don't take this personally. Wait! What? Do you want to do it? Be my guest. It gives me no pleasure. You can't kill him. I have orders to take him to Ratai. That is unfortunate. I have orders to kill everyone involved in this business. You can't do that! I have no choice, as you are aware. Why do you want to kill him? He may have valuable information. For that exact reason. My master does not wish this man to fall into the wrong hands, especially those of Radzik Kobila. You can tell your lord the man is dead. He'll never find out. But he will. Or do you think you can lock this man away from sight until Judgment Day? Why not? Do not be naive, boy. Look around you. This land swarms with rats and snakes, especially now. There is no secret that is not for sale. If I let you have him, my own head will be on a spike before the month is out. You don't have to go back to the Rosenbergs. How do you know about the Rosenbergs? Master Feyfar recognized the writing on your letter of passage. Just as I said, there is nothing safe from prying eyes in this land. And where would you suggest I go? Into Sir Radzik's service. He needs people like you. I serve Kubila. Out of the question. If he learned of all that I did for the Rosenbergs, he would hang me from the nearest tree. But you are right, I do not have to return to the Rosenbergs. In fact, I cannot. Why not? I am a knight without a crest, without allegiance. No one was meant to know whom I serve. If the Rosenbergs hear that I have been found out, they will see to it I vanish. They cannot afford to be associated with me. Where will you go then? Where the road takes me, as I have many times before. Farewell, Henry. Auf Wiedersehen. Goodbye, Ulrich. Maybe we can go some other time. Please, please. I'm sure we can come to some sort of agreement. You can talk all you like, but not here and not to me. Let's go. Let's go. Master Feyfar is very keen to meet you. Good work, Henry. Thank you, Master Feyfar. It wasn't easy, I can tell you. I'll take some men and have a good look around there. And what should I do? You should get some rest and go to Rate. In the meantime, Sir Radzig will have this wretch questioned. Maybe he'll get something useful out of him. All right. I'll see you in Ratai then. Right now, we are automatically in Sasau, and we need to go to Ratai to finish this quest.
So I will buy some kit before I go there. God save you, good night. Take care. Okay. Maybe I will buy armor skit as well. Are you still angry with me, Mastrota? Seems <laughs> good night. So sell some books that is not stolen again. Oh no, it's Bailey. God be with you. I'll see you later. I'm honored that a knight such as you. Now let's go back to Ratai. What happened to you? Terrible things, sir. Terrible things. God must be punishing me, but I truly don't know what I've done to deserve it. Those devils killed my man and then had their way with me. I gave birth in the woods, like an animal. So I beg here at the roadside. Nothing else is left to me. Be merciful, good sir. Wouldn't you have a morsel of food for me, sir? I haven't eaten for three days. Everything I find, I give to the little ones. Don't you want to go to Ratai? There are other refugees there. Someone will take care of you. They drove me out. Ah, I didn't know. Sorry. Wouldn't you have a morsel of food for me, sir? I haven't eaten for three days. Everything I find, I give to the little ones. Of course. Here you are. Thank you, sir. May God bless you. Good luck, man.
Where is he? Downstairs? Oh yeah. There's the man. Good work, Henry. Thank you, sir. I tell you to take a well-earned rest, but unfortunately I need one more thing from you. Whatever you command. Yezhek refuses to talk to us. The stubborn bastards asking to see you. Me? Indeed. Normally I'd send for Captain Burner to beat it out of him, but then I told myself that if he's so keen to speak to you... I'll try to get something out of him. Where is he? He's locked up in the tower. Bernard will give you the key. Very well, sir. Let's ask the key from Captain Bernard. to Yezhek's cell. Hmm. So, Sir Radzik let him have his way in the end. He should have let me beat some answers out of him. Don't take it that way. He probably wants to talk to me because he reckons he can hoodwink me. But that's where he's wrong. Just try not to mess it up. Here's that key. Thanks. I'll be with you. Now let's go to the cell. I've had quite a wait. Why do you want to talk to me, of all people? You brought me here. You should consider it an honor. If hanging around in a damp dungeon with a condemned man is your idea of honor... You're not seeing the bright side. You can be the one who uncovers a conspiracy against the king for your master. You don't get an opportunity like that every day. It did cross my mind, though, that it might be nice to get some assurances for my cooperation. After all, I'm the one the Margrave unjustly declared the scourge of the land and expelled from Moravia. They even pulled my beautiful castle down. It was the necessity of making a living that forced me to take some liberties. Do you really want to question the authority of the Margrave? I've always been loyal to the Crown, but what can I do when the Margrave stole my fief? That's not why we're here. I don't care about your conflict with the Margrave. It's your crimes against the king I'm worried about. The king you say you've always been so loyal to. Very well, ask me anything you want. I won't be obstructive. What I want to know most of all is who's behind it. Who were you making those forgeries for? Do you think I couldn't have handled it all myself? I'm not trying to insult you. It's just not a job one man could do alone. All right, the way it began was I was short of coin, as usual. So I let those crimps in Sassau recruit me. Recruit you into what? 
I didn't inquire too much. In this business, you don't ask too many questions. But when they found out I wasn't just anybody, they put me in charge of the counterfeiting. A foreigner by the name of Eric gave me instructions. But for sure, he isn't the chief. And there's someone highly placed at the monastery who's mixed up in it, too. But I don't know who. How did you come to hear of all this business? I met some old friends in Colleen a few months ago. And they said they were heading for Sasau, that armed men were being recruited, and they'll hire anyone. Old friends? Who were they? Just a couple of brigands. We used to ambush the Margrave's messengers in Moravia together. Nice friends you keep. I was in dispute with the Margrave. A man in my position finds himself mixed up with all sorts. And then what? Rapota and I had been living off stale crusts for a month, so I wasn't going to turn down the chance of work, honest or otherwise. We rode to Sasau and met with the recruiters. It didn't take long to realize I was a nobleman fallen on hard times, not some common peasant. Can you get to the point? Well, they introduced me to this Eric, and he told me what was needed. They set up the workshop, got the men, the supplies, everything. Crimps. You're telling me this Eric is recruiting armed men in Sasau? Well, it seems so. I was giving the recruiters some of the coins to do it. The fake ones, of course. Where can I find the recruiting gang? That's tricky. It was my friends who led me to them. We met with them in the woods next to Sasau. It's about who you know, as always. You said you gave them money. Where was that? They'd ride to the mine gallery to see me. I don't suppose you'd find them there now. Hmm. If you say so. This Eric, you reckon he's not the one in charge? He puts on airs, but he's just a naive young pup. And he's always going on about his lord, though he never mentioned him by name. Where can I find this Eric? You must have had some meeting place. He used to come to the workshop unannounced. And after what's happened, I doubt he'll be showing his face there again. This highly placed person at the monastery, what can you tell me about him? I have no idea who he is, only that he's no small fry. After all, he handles the exchange of the forgeries in Passau. Hmm, I see. Is there anything else at all you can tell me about him? No, he was supposed to supply me with materials too, but he backed out. Eric said he probably got cold feet. That'll do me for the moment. Will you put in a word for me with Sir Radzig? I'll swear allegiance to him if he'll have me. I'm sick of being a renegade. I'll have to think about it. I don't want to annoy Sir Radzig. Okay, so he spit up all of that. The cumin that we get here is still in there. Nice. Now let's talk to Sir Radzig to finish this quest. Yeah. sorts of things. There's some foreigner called Eric behind the counterfeiting ring, and someone highly placed at the monastery. The monastery? Really? That's what Yezek claimed. It's worse than I thought. If this is true, we'll have to proceed with the utmost caution. Why? Can't we just go to the monastery to investigate? No. If the church is truly involved, I have no authority. So what will you do? I'll have to think about it. It won't be an easy nut to crack. I'll have to consult with Hanush. And what of this Eric? Who is he? I don't know, but he's recruiting armed men in Sasau and forming an army. Damn! So it looks like Pribislavitz wasn't the end of it. It most certainly wasn't, sir. And what's more, Sir Yezhek is convinced this Eric is only a go-between, and there's someone bigger behind him. You should return to Sasau and take a closer look at those recruiters. If they're going to attack, we must find out sooner than last time. It might not be as straightforward as that. 
So Yezhek didn't know them and has no idea how to find them. You'll have to manage somehow, my lad. Don't tell me there's an armed force amassing here and nobody knows anything. Go to Sasso and try to find them. Hmm. I know Miller Simon at the Sassau Mill. There you are. Millers usually know what's going on behind the scenes. Go there and talk to him. Whatever you do, be careful, Henry. And best not mention my name. It would attract unwelcome attention. What we want is for the crimps to take you for just another village lad they can lure into their gang. All right, sir. I'll try to blend in as best I can. I know I'm asking a lot of you. But I know of no one else who could help as much as you can now. Sir, there's one more thing. Sir Yezhek went with me without resistance, because I promised him he could come to an agreement with you. My boy, my boy. You make promises in my name? That could turn out very badly for both of us. But, if it can prevent bloodshed, why the hell not? We may well come to some arrangement after all, but I can't say yet what will become of him. You'd better run along. As you command, sir. Okay, so let's finish all that blisters and we will start if you can beat them for the next main quest but as usual I will continue in the next episode so see you next time